What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the show, the podcast. And we have a special guest today to talk about all of the seemingly incredible, at least very interesting news we got from the blog post on Thursday. Our friend Nutsy is back. How's it going, everyone? Welcome. I'm happy to be back. Happy to be back. It was about this time last year, Nutsy was on the last time. And it was, I think it was the week of the game drop. If not, it was right before. So we're pretty, it's pretty much 12 months to the week where we got you back on. And, you know, last year we were talking so much about sets and seasons and it's kind of what we're going to talk about again today. But I think I want to start with like us clarifying with each other and maybe confirming that our sets gone and it's just seasons are like our sets still here, but they're just not calling them that. Exactly. I think <laughs> I think that they have dropped the set nomenclature just because it God, that's a hot button yeah. word in, in the MLB the show community at this point. So I think that they have leaned into seasons, even though functionality wise, sets are still still gonna be there. Although the I do I, I wonder if um one of the changes is that we're gonna see not have set collections this year, right? And mm. that could be the differentiation between the two. Um I could see that change happening, but we'll see. Yeah, I, I kind of, part of me thinks, like you said, they got rid of the word sets because it pisses people off. But secondly, and I'm part of this problem, I feel like people just use the word sets and seasons interchangeably, even though it was incorrect from the start to do that. But now they've just simplified and like they're called seasons now. It's essentially the same, even though it's kind of different, but also it's not. No, I think that that's 100% right. Um, <laughs> I use sets and seasons pretty interchangeably throughout last year. Although over the last little bit, and maybe we will get into it at some point because um, I definitely have my thoughts about MLB The Show 23, but I kind of came to the conclusion that I did not want sets back for this year solely because I was tired of people complaining in my comments. <laughs> like that was, I didn't mind sets that much last year, but I didn't want sets to come back because dude, it's toxic out there with how people feel about sets, but I was hundred percent on board with them bringing seasons back because I thought seasons was a good way to like keep content cohesive. And yep. it was nice to go like for a month with like the AKA cards and then the, um, or the alter ego cards and then the Kaiju cards. And then you moved on to the all-star cards. And like, I kind of thought it was cool to have like those groupings of content. So. Yeah. It, talk about the comment section. I mean, the second you say, Hey, I think sets can work if they do it right. Like you're a shill. You suck. You fucking morons. Like, Hey, I'm allowed to have an opinion regardless of any affiliation with a game studio or not. I'm allowed to think these things. Dude, I, people still think <laughs> I am getting paid weekly by SDS to put out good things about the game and that they boost my pack odds. So there's some people that just how they feel about it. Man. Boost, <laughs> <They> just, I <laughs> mean, I haven't pulled Mike Trout at an important part in the game cycle in four or five years, maybe. I've yeah. pulled him in like November, but like yeah. I haven't pulled him in the beginning of the game cycle in years. So please, SDS, if you're listening, boost my pack odds. Me too. And I spent, I think I went 0 for 60 trying to pull Ali out of chase packs this Ooh. year. Um, so I, and all of that was like money spent, mind you, like I'm not a no money spent <laughs> player. So I was just dumping money into chase packs, man. I really could use some boosted odds during uh, that. I might've pulled like three chase players all year and never when I wanted them. Like mm -hmm. it was four months after the fact that we're pulling Mickey Mantle. It's like, cool. I've had him for four months, but now I get another one. That's much cheaper. Okay. Um, yeah, so, I mean, there's so much to talk about from the blog post. I wish it was a feature premiere. I see why it wasn't one. By using a blog, they could really get granular and not have anything lost in interpretation. And the second they would have said seasons are back, a live Twitch chat would have eviscerated everybody on the camera for no good oh, reason. God. So I understand why it wasn't feature premiere. But I'm just curious, you know, from everything we got, what is the big thing that sticks out to you? Because like I said, there are so many things, so many yeah. things to talk about. Yeah. I mean, and I started my, my TikToks with it about this, knowing that people were going to be, they were going to slide off my video. If I, if I said sets and seasons were back, <laughs> the thing that I really lean into, and I think it's the thing that's the biggest news we got with regards to DD. And maybe we can talk about the gameplay feature premiere or the sure, gameplay yeah, blog. Absolutely. At a different yeah. point, Cause I love the changes there too. But the biggest thing is power creeps back. 
and I, for, for me personally, the, the one place where I had struggles with sets and seasons, um, it did feel like a lot of times you were grinding for a very similar card to what you already had. Mm -hmm. So like I have, you know, a 90 name, I'm 99 overall first baseman. Um, I've been using Bellinger for a good chunk of the year. Like what incentive is there for me to grind 99 Mark McGuire? Like it's basically like I'm going out and getting another Mm -hmm. high hitting card it, and if it, you've already done complete um collections you don't even need to waste your time correct so i i think that bringing power creep back and making it so you get that sense of progression again where you're like oh sweet i unlocked this card and it instantly makes my team better yeah. that's awesome um i think that that's going to have a really really positive impact to how people feel about the game and um the fact that the seasons have been extended. So one of the things that I thought uh, people I've been seeing in my comments and stuff like that is um, people being upset that uh, you don't have any carryover, like virtually any carryover seasons with cards. So it's mm -hmm. like you get to season one cards and then season two drops and they're gone. Yeah. But the way I'm thinking about it in my head is like, you know, we, we could use cards for two sets last year, the set that they came out in and then the following set, which felt so friggin' long. It felt super long and it was 12 weeks. Yeah. So a season is going to be 12 weeks this year. It's With going progression. to be the exact, exactly. It's going to be yeah. the exact same time frame as you got to use a card last year. Um, I, so I don't envision that as being as big a problem as people seem to think it's going to be. But um, I, I think that there are some people that are just going to be upset that seasons are back and that's as far as they're going to be willing to engage with it yeah the, the people i get the people in the comments or you get the same comments like oh thanks sds for taking away a card i grinded for mm -hmm. all right chill out you have a wild card first of all i respect your time not everyone has the amount of time that we might have to play this game so right. for you it might have been a, a, a significant grind compared to what it is for for us who play a lot but you have your wild card spots you can unlock more wild card spots as it goes. Mm -hmm. And I encourage everybody to try new cards, try new swings. You don't, you know, maybe your favorite player of all times, Ken Griffey Jr. You want to use him all the time. I get it. But you don't have to use the same nine dudes the whole year. You can switch it up. I implore you to switch it up. There are plenty of good cards. Uh, and when it comes to the team building and the progression, it was not an expected thing in my evolution as a MLB The Show player, but I now enjoy Battle Royale. And it feels like nine inning team building battle royale a little bit in the beginning of every single season, because mm -hmm. you're going to have to use your golds, maybe silvers. I don't know what obviously the content's going to look like, but you have to be methodical and intentional about how you build your team. And I think that's super fun. I've missed real team building in ranked for, I mean, I don't know the last time we had real team building in ranked. It's been forever. Oh yeah. No, I, I, I agree. And the, the kickoffs. So effectively we're going to get three launch days this year. Basically where you, you basically are fun. restarting. That's and, cool. Yeah, I agree. And you know, having to go back into ranked with, you know, an 84 overall card or an 83 overall card, cause you have a hole at a position now because cards are gone is going to be really, really cool. Um, going back to something you mentioned, I do get a lot of comments about the, you know, I want to be able to use whatever card mm -hmm. I own at any point whatsoever but i think about it and i'm like going back in prior years how often did you go back and play with cards you unlocked in april by the time june and july oh, came around two guys maybe yeah like, maybe so, so like you know at the end of the year it's fun to like oh this guy was a demon for me early in the year let's throw him onto a ranked squad and you're still going to be able to do that after se season three when all of the cards are unlocked again but you know you're the card that you unlocked in april that's an 88 overall it was not going to be a card you played with June, in June and July in prior years. It's ex the exact same now. It's just now that there's a there's a formal prevention from allowing you to play with it versus you just putting it into your binder never to be heard from again. Yeah. So I, and from that sense, and that was an argument I had with people last year, I don't think sets and seasons substantively changed the fact that people were changing out cards so randomly because you're not you're not ever, especially in like a competitive game mode like ranked, you never want to be at a disadvantage. No, of course so not. Why would you use the 88 overall card when everyone has full full teams of 95s? Like it, yeah. it just didn't make sense. So um, I hear the I hear that that anger and I hear that argument. I just don't I just don't really buy into it personally. Yeah, and and the burnout last year 
I think had less to do with sets and seasons as a concept and more to do with how in the first three quarters of the game cycle, the grind was the same every single time content dropped. But I said this when they started changing the content in 23, by like the last quarter of 23, they started making some tweaks and like, you can grind however you want. And I'm like, if they're going to do this now, they're going to put it in 24. And that is a game changer. That's that will keep things a little more fresh. Will it still be a grind? Of course but you can pivot and play how you want as opposed to doing showdown and conquest and all the crap you don't want to do. Yeah, no, I a hundred percent agree. And I think that people, you know, people had big issues with the content structure of MOB the show 23 and I am one of them, mm-hmm. but if you continued to play the game throughout the year, which I, I know a lot of people did not, how substantively it, the programs and how you completed them changed from April to September was like, night and day oh, and, and i don't blame the people who put the game at, game down and don't realize it changed because you were burnt out and if you're burnt out of something you should step away from it but from experience we kept playing this game it changed for sure it wasn't perfect but it changed yeah so it's for team affinity one in 2023 it took me probably 40 to 50 hours to finish all of the it team was affinity, which is ridiculous yeah by the end of the year with team affinity five the finest cards i finished all of team affinity in like sub 10 hours mm-hmm and now I have just a bunch of online vouchers that I just oh, I have, have no use for. Upwards of a hundred of them. Yeah, yeah, but the fact that you could go play ranked, you could go play BR, you could go play events and not have to worry about nine or grinding out conquest showdown moments is great. Allow people to unlock the cards how they want to unlock the cards. And it seems like they are really going to be leaning into that for MLB The Show 24, which I think is a fantastic change and will allow people to get some of the feelings they had in MLB The Show 21, where you're like, I barely ever had to grind offline if I didn't want to. I can just go play online however much I want. And that's going to be a change that I think makes a lot of people very happy about the game this year. The other thing kind of ties into what we were just talking about with Team Affinity. And in my opinion, this is the most important thing to come from the blog. That's, I mean, the blog was so dense that everyone's going to have different things that they like most. Um, It seems on paper, we of course don't have the game in front of us yet. We don't know in practice, but on paper, it seems like their number one priority for MLB The Show 24 is pacing. (laughs) MLB The Show for several years has had pacing problems. Storylines last year, I didn't interpret it as a pacing problem. I just thought it was too short. I wanted more. So now they're spreading it out. Team Affinity is going to be spread out every, like, what was it? Like three or four weeks. I think it was four weeks, probably. Um, Everything just seems like it is intentionally paced out. First of all, so as to not stress you with one giant content dump, but also to eliminate the three week lulls in content we got during the sets and seasons model of 23. So if that executes the way they're telling me it's going to execute, that's a huge win. Agreed. And I think that that was my biggest issue. And I posted a TikTok about this just the other day. My biggest issue was the content pacing in MLB The mm-hmm. Show 23. Like you'd get this massive dump of content day one. And then, you know, for people like you and me who do this almost as a second job, um, we were done with it in four days. And yep. then like you get these these small programs throughout the rest of the season. But like how much can that really engage you? So instead of having all of Team Affinity on day one and finishing it in three days, having step one on launch, step two a month later, and then getting the best cards for Team Affinity Mm -hmm. and step three at the end of the season, like that keeps me engaged all the way throughout a season, keeps me coming back to the game, keeps giving me a new thing to work on every time I load in. And that's how a live series or a live service game and how a card collecting game has to work. Yeah. It doesn't need to work like that for Road to the Show. It doesn't need to work that like that for franchise. But I have to have some reason to log into the game um, to, to keep me grinding on DD. And to even add an extra layer to that, I, I made a video months ago, and I talked about this in the uh, blog recap video I posted uh, today, Friday. Um, events has been a problem for a long time in terms of sometimes they're a week, sometimes they're two weeks, sometimes they're this, sometimes they're that. The fact that they outright said every event is going to be two weeks, I don't think people understand how massive that's going to end up being Mm -hmm. because there are a lot of times, you know, SDS, of of course, tries their best to line up content as they can. But sometimes you've got like three things ending at the same point in time. And it makes it like, first of all, you got to juggle priorities or you you feel like you can't put the game down. You got to do this, this and this. I don't want to feel like I'm logging on to homework. I know the community kind of uses that word in a funny, meany way but I truly don't want it to feel like I'm logging on to just do totally. a to-do list. 
So the fact that it's going to be a two week period, you could play a couple games, take a day away. Like you could come back and forth. That's going to be incredibly huge for just not burning myself out with grinding all this stuff. Yeah. And I think that um, they're going to carry that over into trying to make different things drop at different times. This I hope year so. Because I think they're going to stagger ranked in BR as well. Mm-hmm. So I think the first ranked season will kick off. Um, either it'll kick off two weeks after launch or it'll kick off immediately on launch. And then battle Royale will kick off two weeks after launch and each will last for a month. Yeah. So like if you have launched to the end of the first month, you have the second week into the sixth week and it's just going to like move itself through. It two makes sense increments. for ranks. Yeah, yeah. Because um, for obviously rank seasons are generally four weeks. So it would give you three solid rank seasons in every full like uh content season yeah if that makes sense so I, I think just for ease like that's what makes sense for me um but i i think that they're they're going to do a much better job this year about spreading out content and and making making you feel um maybe not as overwhelmed about getting a bunch of stuff dumped on you and not feeling like, like you have enough time to get everything done before something goes away i i'm hoping and it seems like based on the information they have given us that that is something that they've focused on this year and maybe I'm speaking out of my ass. I don't think I am. Sometimes I do that. Um, I don't think really any Diamond Dynasty player has ever said there aren't enough cards. They might be like, hey, where's my 99 of this one particular person? But they've never been like, there are not enough cards. So even if SDS scaled back the volume just a tick, but planned it better and did it incrementally, I mean, we're talking about a huge turnaround for a content structure last year that was just pretty awful. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that. And um, part of the thing that I think led to a lot of burn MLB the show 23 was the continuous feeling that you were grinding for the same things. So like the fact that you got three 99 Kyle Schwarbers, that should never happen. It's just, you're asking people you for giving us these over and over again. Um, you know, part of that is we do need more legends in MLB the show, like the legend pool just it has to keep increasing it has to keep getting to a bigger side but having it so you only get a few weeks of 99s every season should prevent that like repeat cycle of cards coming regularly like also Cattell Marte no one ever talks about Cattell Marte Cattell Marte (laughs) got three different 99s that's because everybody loves Cattell that's true um he is fantastic but like there was a lot of cards that got multiple 99s over and over overalls and you're just like why my trout got three 99s everyone loves my trout but like mm-hmm. does he need 399 cards i don't really think he does <laughs> now at least if he gets 399s it's because you have to use a new one every time it comes out mm-hmm. and you know I, I still think one of the fundamental things that at least on the surface right now is still missing from seasons again we don't know all the information yet players who had like distinctive career paths that evolved over the like time of their career where like they could have three different types of 99s Mm -hmm. i use him all the time everybody wants him it's a rod where like he had three in my opinion very distinctive career paths or career segments rather and he is the type of guy that fits the model perfectly Mm -hmm. how many players of like him exist not many but like players like that make it make sense a little bit so Mm -hmm. i'm hoping we get to see more legends more legends are going to make this even more of a w if that's what's happening there were some things that I'm, I'm still a little fuzzy on. I'm sure we're going to get a lot more information in the feature premiere. Uh, I'm very curious to hear more about, if maybe they even talk about it, the decision to make BR 10-0 now. It's great for me. The opera, well, It's going to be great for a lot of people. The I just got good at the damn mode, too, and now they're making it 10-0. Um, the operative word there in that sentence, though, was rewards will start at 10-0. I don't know if that was, like, just not understanding how impactful that word is or if that was intentional being like you can continue on past 10 because that i think that'd be fun but i don't know how it would work yeah um i've heard some rumblings um that's what i will say about that uh so i'm not going to get into like the actual specifics of what i have heard but i think that they were very intentional with starting at 10 and 0 like i I think they use that word specifically it's not stop there uh, it's (laughs) it's not flawless rewards or uh well it probably is flawless rewards are coming at 10 to no but they would they didn't just say like go 10 to no get a flawless reward starting at 10 to no seems to have been a very specific um word choice yeah okay well i'm very i'm very curious to see i I was curious to see what was gonna happen with that and now i'm even more curious um 
I think lowering the threshold to flawless is interesting. I think they probably saw numbers of like people just don't play BR enough because it's so daunting. So maybe by lowering it back a little bit, that helps. But also I think now with rewards being mostly sellable again, just unlocking or the ability to unlock those cards easier was probably uh, probably a decision SDS wanted to make. They, they want more cards in the hands of more people is my guess. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that. And that it seems to be like the mission statement based on like the last sentences of the, the blog saying like, we want people to be able to get the cards that they want, yeah. how they want to do it. Um, I, I am not a BR fan. I just, I don't enjoy the mode. I, I played maybe cumulative 15 BR games this year, mm -hmm. um, if that much. Part of that is because like, to be fair, in MLB 23, the online rewards weren't very good. They weren't. Like, why? I just wanted I, the icons. That's all. Yeah, I no, I mean, that's fair. <laughs> um, but, like, I'm not going to go out of my way to grind the BR program if the dude doesn't have a spot on my squad. And yeah. on top of that, I can't sell the card, right? Like, there's no incentive for me. To, I'm not, I don't want to use the card, and I also can't make any stubs off of it. Mm -hmm. Like, what's the incentive for me to grind six hours or seven hours to finish the BR program? Yeah. So, um, but I do think, like, I have always been a player who can get to, like, 9, 10, 11, and 0. I just have never been able to get over the hump. And so I'm very much looking forward to maybe having a few flawless runs this year. Are you going to get a 10 times icon this year? Probably not. That. <laughs> um, anything in that blog post um, leave you wanting more? Anything you're confused on? Anything maybe you're, you're like not super thrilled about? Yes, I posted I posted a tweet about it today. I went back and reread the, the DD blog because I knew I was coming on today. And the part that I prepares. want clarification on <laughs> is where they talked about the live series collection because mm. if you go back and reread that, that also section, that also tickled one of my brain parts i was like so oh interesting the sentence that i am really focused on here and maybe it means nothing but it's it's what has me like kind of honed in so they say this reward and they're talking about the the live series collection reward this reward will take a considerable amount of time and skill so be prepared to level up not only your squad but also your prowess on the sticks if that you sounds want more it. than just buying cards with stuff it does it does it sounds like there's going to be some sort of mission component or mm -hmm. there is going to be something going on that like maybe you unlock tiers of the live series collection but you have to do additional steps to get to like the big boss. So I, I've galaxy brained this and it's going to inevitably be wrong, but here we go. So the end card or the end of the blog post was a, a blurred out card that I think the community has largely come to just accept that it's probably a Willie Mays. It looks like mm -hmm. Willie Mays, even though we already have Willie Mays in the game, it looks like Mr. Willie. So they're either showing off new card art, which it clearly is new card art, or something else and eagle-eyed people pointed out that it had a set like or season rather icon the mm -hmm. red oval in the top left corner so that you know confuses me a little bit but i think uh, there's another buzzword that the MLB the show community hates is immortals i am not saying they're back because i think sds is smart enough to realize they shouldn't be back but what if there's like a way to honor those immortal players in a quasi immortal grind that's not nearly as bad, but maybe those type of guys will be your big collections, including a live series, including a season click. Like that's kind of where my head is going. Here, here's the thing. Everyone hated immortals and the fact that you could only do them online, but I didn't hear as many complaints about prestiging cards and MLB the show 20, which is the same concept. You have to unlock Basically. a card and then to get a better version of the card without the bobbleheads and online. the trophies and the, the bullshit. Yeah, But then, to a lesser extent, paralleling is just the immortal grind again. Like, it's just... you. The, just diff the only difference... I agree with you, but the only difference is, like, you're actively using the card as opposed mm -hmm. to working up towards the better card. Yeah. So, I mean, like, they, they have implemented these kind of grinds, and now that you mentioned that, I did go back and look at that. that it's pretty obviously a Willie Mays card based on the plaque and also the stance, and people have found the picture of of the card art yeah at this point, i'm so. pretty po i'm like 98 positive it's willie mace unless you're they're right. pulling a, a, a an okie doke i don't know what the hell it could be <laughs> that that top left hand corner it says that's a that's a season one card because the core the core is cards orange, if you look it? at the block yeah it's orange and that is yeah. very clearly red yeah so uh, you could be right uh, about that 
Um, but I just, I don't think that they would have called out the live series collection like that and made such a point of like, oh, you're going to have to play the game and get good at the game to get it if there wasn't something coming there. And obviously mm -hmm. we're going to find out on the feature premiere on the 14th because they're going to go back over this stuff and then start giving us that, the live content. And we have not had the massive legend drop yet. Mm -mm. Like, Yankee fan, so of course I'm stoked about all the Yankee legends we're getting. The Negro Leagues legends look super cool, but like I know not every year can be Sosa McGuire Jeter because that costs a lot of money, but we don't have a banger yet. So I'm curious no. what they've got up their sleeves. Legends have been exceptionally trickling in this year, like even leading up to last year's game with Sosa McGuire Jeter and uh, leading up to MLB The Show 22. We were getting like two to three legend reveals a week. And, and most of ones. them, were, yeah, but you know, a lot of them were like your, your run of the mill Brian Dozier mm -hmm. level legend reveals, but like, yeah, we haven't had, I mean, Josh Gibson is going to be a freak. Of oh, nature. that's yeah. And I'm not saying that to like short change his accomplishments. Yeah. I'm just saying like the, all the names we clamor for, like the big guys, we don't have those. Mm -hmm. And I, I, it does like kind of raise the question who, who do, who are they holding back? Who's um, left? Yeah. Are we going to get the legend trailer this Tuesday? Are we going to get the legend trailer the following Tuesday? It's coming. Like I, I, I don't know. I I am so aboard the A Rod bandwagon, especially with the Jeter storylines. And like I'm just I'm setting my hopes way too high. Leave but, it to A Rod to overshadow Jeter just one more time in his career. Yeah, <laughs> but like you can't tell the story of the Yankees 2009 World Series season without A Rod and Matsui, who I'd also go fucking crazy for. But I, I, I think I'm, it. I mean, I think they're coming, man. I'm legitimately upset we didn't get Hidaki Matsui in 22 with the Takashi card art. Like Terrible. that is, yeah. I, I'm still grumpy about that. Speaking of Takashi card art coming back, that's awesome. fun. Um, yeah, but yeah, Hideki Matsui I think makes a whole lot of sense if we're talking about legends who you know fit into like the Jeter sphere. Mm -hmm. Um, man, I just. I would think that someone like as big as a rod would be someone that they would have part of the promo marketing, yeah. unless they're not like, trying to take away from the Jeter part. Yeah. I, I don't know. So, but the, it, do, it also the, looks like they shadow dropped the legend. Um, at least scan was putting his detective hat on. It looked like Jason Baratek was the Red Sox catcher oh, in the yeah. Jeter storyline. Mm -hmm. It's hard to tell behind the mask, but like the gear matched up and yeah. I wouldn't be shocked if we got Baratek. No, I think that that makes sense. The name that I, I, I think makes a lot of sense with the Jeter storyline is Manny Ramirez. Yeah. Like leaning into the Red Sox Yankees rivalry. He's a, a name that would make the community go absolutely wild. I love but it. he's not like a rod level. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, I'm curious to see because we, the, we are missing names like every year. I mean, if you go back even to MLB, the show 20, you bring in Mickey Mantle. You go to MLB The Show 22, you bring in Randy Johnson, uh, you bring in Roberto Clemente, I believe, for 22, yeah. and Hank Aaron for 22, too. So, like, you had these huge names, and then obviously Jeter Sosa and McGuire last mm -hmm. year, and there is going to be big names in this. Like, yeah. they bring in one, two, three huge legends every single year, so you have to assume that they're going to be, like, three massive names. And even if you consider Josh Gibson one of the massive names, which I don't, even though I am personally could not be more excited about him being in the game, like, we have some slots here for some names to blow our socks off, and I'm sure they will. The only thing that concerns me just a little bit with that, and this is just obviously pure speculation, the fact that the Jeter storyline is happening this year and not with the Captain edition when he first came out, Leads me to believe they're kind of trying to prolong and milk that for as much as possible. And I'm not complaining. I think it's going to be fun. I'm anxious to play it. But it, it does seem like they're trying to prolong that a little bit. So I wonder if maybe that's like a holdover for a lack of other. Because he couldn't have been cheap, let me tell yeah. you. So uh, I would say probably not, just based on my knowledge of how it goes, like developing a game. Mm -hmm. um, my guess is Jeter came on or they got his rights pretty late in the process and they did not have the time to turn around the storylines. They mode. also probably didn't have time. Like, they wanted to see how storylines worked the first year, mm -hmm. let alone adding more to it. So that, that's the other side of the coin for sure. But, it, you know. And I think Jeter is a big enough name that can really kick off the storylines outside of the Negro Leagues. Yeah. Um, and, I like, who who better? Like, as far as names go, maybe you could have done someone like Hank Aaron or done, like, a great race of 98 storyline or something like oh, that. that would have been so freaking cool. Yeah. But, G like, Jeter is, like, that's that's icon right that mm -hmm. no one makes a better for this era of storyline than Derek Jeter does yeah
what do you think of because you know it just started trickling out today the captains and the way they're going to work i am not a captain user honestly like i just don't use them and maybe that's stupidity but i i i, I think it's cool but i also still like byron buxton needs a vision boost why isn't he getting Here, one? like I, yeah. I don't know here's my thing with captains especially these cornerstone captains that they're dropping. So personally, I wasn't the biggest fan of captains just because it like, I'll just go use my God squad, right? Like mm -hmm. all of my hitters are. Everybody ends up being 115 yeah. plus anyway. Yeah. So like, it's like, okay, I can just use my favorite swings guarantee instead of hamstring stringing myself with cards mm -hmm. or swings that I don't like to use a theme team. And I kind of feel the same way about the cornerstone captains that they're dropping. Like, I'm why like it's nice for and I'm talking specifically about Buxton here like it's cool the extra power's cool the extra speed's cool the extra fielding's cool I'm not gonna hamstring myself with 13 hitters with sub 60 <laughs> vision to get those boosts the like, only counter to that is because we're starting off with a lot of golds they'll naturally be that low probably yeah. but I, like I I just I'm I don't want to harm myself to the extent or yeah. put myself in a box to an extent that like I actually have to harm my experience to be able to get these top tier boosts. What I think would make sense personally, and it was one of my big issues with captains this year, is every single game you played where a person had a captain card, that captain card was gotten in the first inning. Yeah, that like, needs to be fixed. We need yeah. information on that. So the, what the what they should have done is made it so even if the captain literally just increases a boost for itself. Like it should make that card a well-rounded card. Yeah. So for Buxton here, you can get all of those plus 15s and plus 10s that he was going to get, but also specifically to this Buxton card to make him a well-rounded card, we gave him plus 20 vision, right? Yeah. And then all of a sudden he is a, a monster and there's no incentive for you to take him out of your lineup to get another 99 in or another 95 in or whatever. That would have been something I would have liked to see implemented on these cornerstone captains um the two that we've seen so far i'm like buxton i i'm not gonna use them realistically i just i don't want i to probably won't use any of them i but, think May, uh, like but, i might use kodai senga as a pitcher because early in the game you're not gonna have a lot of good pitchers yeah. but i don't know like his captain boost i don't know it yet but i, I don't i don't know maddox's captain boost is interesting though because the of hitting how you thing. lock it and the fact that it impacts both pitchers and hitters which that is, so is super different. super interesting but the fact that you can unlock his his tier three captain boost by combining pitchers and hitters. Mm -hmm. So you need 13 people that meet the requirements of the card to get his tier three captain boost. Yeah. And you could do like six hitters and seven pitchers. Math. That's good math. Mm -hmm. uh, to, to get his tier three boost. And that's awesome. But like, that makes me speculate because we have not heard otherwise. Is it just one captain now? Are you using two captains? I, I, because they're making you choose a cornerstone captain in the beginning. That's either a pitcher or a hitter, not both. Yeah. I, I, maybe I, that's just me again, galaxy braining, but it's just a thought. I, the, the only thing that gives me pause, cause I had that first thought when I saw it initially too, is um, if you go back and look at the um, Buck Leonard captain we got last year, he impacted both hitting uh, Buck O'Neill or Buck O'Neill. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Buck Leonard's the new legend. The new I'm going to mix yeah. them up all year. <laughs> um, but yeah, Buck O'Neill impacted both hitting and pitching with his captain boost, but he was a hitter captain. I guess I never noticed. I mean, again, I didn't use captain. Yeah. So I just didn't realize that. So the storylines captain um, Buck O'Neill that you got impacted their because all of the Negro leagues players were, were two virtually players. all two way yeah. players. Yeah. So he would give them a boost to hits and K's per nine and then contact huh. power. Interesting. So, okay. That, that would be the only thing that would like kind of give me pause. But I had the first thought when I saw it that today too. Um, the, the going back to um, getting more collections is kind of cool too. They showed off that, that 91 overall core Vlad Jr. Mm -hmm. That's going to be a collection reward. It looks like on, on drop. Um, I, I'm a fan of that. Like I, I kind of missed the legend and flashback collections by the end of last year, like just, only doing the side collections i think kind of took away some of the fun of getting like these big collection drops yeah i i was not a fan of the marriage of collections and sets i felt like it just it further made it seem like a grindy collectathon and ultimately it's it's an ultimate team mode it is a collectathon to some degree but it just seemed too much i didn't think it didn't work in terms of like balancing of content it didn't work in terms of balancing of players it, it just didn't work so i hope the collections this year make sense that's all i can and, and how will they make sense we'll be able to feel if they make sense or not if it feels like 
anything like last year, it doesn't make sense. But I, yeah. I, I think it's going to be okay. It looks like it's already off to a better start. Agreed. Um, one of the things that I thought was interesting too is they showed us the screenshot of the season one XP reward path. Mm-hmm. Um, and first of all, headliners are back, which is great because diamond duos were not good. No, but like, aren't headliners equally is not great? Like, I feel like I had better luck with headliners than I did with the diamond duos. And it was nice, like, there was nothing worse than pulling a diamond duo and it having it be the wrong person. So, like, yeah. you had because you had two different goals. You were like, oh, I, I, actually, want- I actually think. Um, whether it was headliners or diamond duos now this year, I think they're going to be better success rates because early on the headliners are going to be what? 87s. They, they, yeah. they might be golds. Like maybe there's mm-hmm. just a better success rate on them. I don't know. But the, the, the part that I really wanted to focus on in the season one XP reward path was the unlimited bonus rewards up in the top, which is that yes. like spin the live series. Um, yes. 90, pack 90 plus 90 plus live series cards. That could be so clutch. If that's going to balance bonus the market, spin. hopefully. Yeah. Um, and the other one that is cool is, uh, chase packs, right? Like chase packs coming back. I I don't think anyone assumed chase packs were going anywhere, Mm -hmm. but, um, although man, do I need chase packs to get some changes this year, or at least be transparent with the odds. Like, I so I had Mills on the podcast months ago and we were talking about chase packs and he said legally, and maybe this is where you can come in that you don't need to display the odds on the chase pack because technically they are coming out of a pack that's telling you the odds or some sort Correct. of something like that. Yep, yep. So that maybe is there just needs to be a different way to unlock them. Yeah, that that is 100% the truth because the, the actual gambling you're doing is with the pack itself. They don't need to tell you the odds of the pack you get out of the I mean, pack. talk about a loophole. I don't know if that yeah. was intentional or not, but talk about a loophole. Yeah. And, but, but I would love to know, like, I think someone did some, some like cursory um, research on chase packs this year and I've seen it. I think the chase pools are one in 55. Like that's, that's about what his averages came out to in opening thousands upon thousands of chase packs was it came out to about one in 55. You would, you would pull the the chase card, which was kind of in line with what I thought the odds were, to be honest. But if that's the case, no, like (laughs) drop it down to like one in 20. It's so hard to get chase packs. Like they, it seems like last year they dropped the amount of chase packs you got out of standard packs. Like I didn't see them nearly Well, it begs the question, what should be more exclusive, the chase pack or the card? You can't have both be super exclusive. Yeah. No, I I 100% agree. So like if you give me more chase packs, just like throw them at me and they're one in 55 odds, I'm really not going to complain as much, but- having them be super, super rare. And then on top of that, have the player coming out of them be super, super rare, rare just kind of feels like, uh, unfortunately, kind of a slap in the face mm-hmm. to, the, to the players, which is unfortunate. Um, I don't know, man. I, as like a whole, I am a big fan of the the Diamond Dynasty blog and what we got yeah. out of it. Um, it did, it did, it put me um, at ease a little bit because I, I think there was a lot of worry in the community about what Diamond Dynasty content oh, you was could going to feel look like. It oh, yeah. You can oh, yeah. feel it. Was... it. Like, you and read I... anything anywhere, and you could just feel the angst. And this might be um, reckless speculation on my part. I don't think they intended to drop this blog. Oh, you think this was in response to the what about sets? What about yes. sets? What about yes. sets? Interesting. Okay. So I, I think that I think that realistically what we would have gotten this year was the gameplay trailer on Tuesday and then the gameplay blog on Thursday. Mm. And what they what ended up happening because there has been so much fire under the community about how content was going to work. They wanted to get that information out in the community and let us yeah. digest it. Um, and ultimately, I think it's going to work in their favor because I, I think the changes are going to be well received by a vast majority of the community. If now, you look at see... like if you look at like mid game cycle twenty three and the the sentiment about sets and seasons, and you look at like right now sentiment about seasons, it's better now. It's not oh, perfect, yeah. but like it is truly better than it was five six months ago. So that's a win. Now, the, I, and I'm always willing to give SDS the benefit of the doubt and i'm always willing to give what they try a try and like mm-hmm. come at into sure. it with an open mind because I, I, I trust that they're gonna do a good job for the most part we will see how i feel about seasons day one of season two because uh, yeah. how that transact yeah. how that transition occurs is going to basically determine whether or not this idea because it was about by idea. set three where i was like i'm kind of bored of this yep. a little bit yeah it was the first time cars phased out you were like oh wait a second i 
this is well and then to amplify it way. set three was the most juice set in my opinion you had the all-star cards you had everything and that's when all the cards started to feel the same and mm-hmm. i don't want cards to feel the same i want them to have identity i want mm-hmm. like everyone was it 22 or 21 the the 93 Cattell Marte headliner was like everybody's niche favorite card. It was 22. It, it was 22 because it was just like a cool, fun, not high diamond. I, I miss that. Well, and that kind of raises the question. Um, I guess it would have been, did you play MOB 20? Like, have you been playing? How I don't know your your background on how long you've been playing the game. You talking about like my career playing MOB or? Yeah. So like, did you play Diamond, diamond Dynasty in 2020? Yes. That was when, um, so quick story. I had just moved to Baltimore for my new job. I knew nobody in this city and the pandemic was just hitting when the game was dropping. What a perfect twist of fate yeah. for SDS. I mean, we can't make jokes about that, but um, I know life that game. And that's when I started getting into like thinking about the podcast and doing all. So that was, that was like my year where I really dove head first into it. I got my monitor. Like that's when I went into it. Okay. So that's good. Cause um, I think that what you're saying, we have by the end of the year, every card is juiced to its skills and they all do feel the same and you're basically just picking like oh i kind of like this dude's swing or it feels like this dude who's a switch hitter yeah 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 Yeah. but in mlb the show 20 all the way to the end of the year you look at if you go back and look at those finest cards that we got that year people's heads would explode Mm -hmm. in in today's age because you got like mookie betts who won the mvp that year and got like 92 contact against one of the sides and everyone's attributes and ratings were just way lower there was was the that the year where there was a freddie freeman that just had inexplicably bad contact versus yes. one side yeah. yeah so that that finest drop um and but you did get the juan soto who was just cracked out of his mind that was the, one of my favorite across. cards of all time yeah but like that's exactly um what you're saying that like those cards all felt like they played differently because their attributes were so wildly different mm-hmm. and that was the year they dropped the my trout is the um legends and flashback collection and he, he ended up being like a, um, I think he had like 98 or 99 contact against one side. Like if they dropped a legend flashback collection now with 98, 99 contact <laughs> We'd against revolt. one side, the community would but, rise. And that's, that's the thing. Like the reason, another reason, there are very many reasons, but another reason that 23's content got a lot of pushback was that if you were not a five-tool demon god, which so many cards were, but if you were not a five-tool demon god, you were automatically useless. And so many of the cards that we grinded to unlock filled no discernible role. If you're Mm going to give me a card that I have to spend time to get, at least give me something. He's got to be a a left-handed bench bat. He's got to be a versatile, uh, you know, fielder in the late innings. He's got to be someone with speed. Like, I need to have a value for why I'm going after the card. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean everybody's going to use him. But now I think we're going to see more of that. We're going to see mm-hmm. like real platooning. We're going to see legitimate, like we're going to be using a lot of shitty fielders at the start of mm-hmm. these seasons. Like Scuffy was just kind of looking back at what some of the cards could be. And he thinks one of the cards is going to be a Jorge Soler. Mm-hmm. It's the Jorge Soler we have now. That's like a low diamond or a, or a low nineties, but it's going to be mm-hmm. a gold version. Yeah. That card is legitimately going to have 37 field. Yeah. You're not yeah. going to play him late in the game. You're going to have to like take Nelson him out. It's just like Nelson Cruz cards. Yeah, so like so. I, I like the idea of giving cards that normally we wouldn't care about value. Mm-hmm. And I think that is the important way to keep content churning. Keep everybody like making lineup decisions. Like legitimate mm-hmm. roster decisions have to be made now. And that yeah. that excites me, truly. No, I agree. Some, of the, I mean, the, 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 the main part of Diamond Dynasty, like outside the card collecting, is the team building, right? Yeah. Like, team building is what makes the mode fun you have to figure out like okay i want to use this card over this card for this reason and like you kind of have to just like figure out what cards are your favorite and put them in the lineup and i think that that's what makes it really really fun um i will say one of the things that i did notice in the blog that maybe i am less than pleased about or less than excited about it does not look like we're getting any update to modes period in diamond dynasty uh, yeah and i mean the battle royale being slightly different is not a new mode it's a, it's a tweak to a mode but it doesn't look like anything new yeah and i i mean like we have been having events br um events br and uh ranked, ranked. for like seven years at this point eight years with with yeah. n- with no changes to those core 
core modes. And I don't like, think co-op hit the way they thought it would. So that essentially is a non-fix, you know? Yeah. And I, I think that co-op is also a whole other plethora of issues. That oh, they that needs think that they were that needs to, a whole development cycle on its own. Yeah. Um, which I think co-op is a really, really good idea and giving an incentive for friends to play together and play the game together is a really, really good idea. 100%. It has to work. Right? Yeah. Like that's the, that's the, and no one's going to use it or no one's going to play it if it, if it doesn't work. Um, but we need, like, I don't know what it even looks like. The one that I have been clamoring, the two, I guess, that I've been clamoring for nonstop is give me a salary cap to rank seasons. Mm-hmm. Like salary cap to ranked would be, That'd be super absolutely fun. super awesome. Yeah. And give me like a weekend league or like a, just like a. And those can even overlap because if you, if you did a weekend league that had like the battle style restrictions mm-hmm. where you have to have X number of 84s or whatever, that's basically a salary cap. Yeah. Um, I thought that them testing out this all diamond BR was a dry run for something new. Mm-hmm. Like I made a video on it literally this last week. And I said, they're either trying to get reaction out of the way now because it's coming in 24 or they're looking for feedback now so they can develop it for 25 Mm -hmm. because I don't think they just fundamentally changed BR like that when everybody likes BR for its team building, not for its diamonds. So I'm confused as to why they did this. Yeah. And I don't think it, it would have created a big resurgence of people coming back to the game to play. It stopped me from playing it. Like it actually pulled me the other direction. Fair enough. Um, so yeah, I, I think that you're right. Like, I think that it looks like that they would probably be trying to do something with that. Like, I'm curious it what it be could a, be. I don't know. Mode, or even if it's like limited time, almost like a BR events, right. That they run it for like a weekend here and there. Ooh, um, that's an interesting concept. Actually. Yeah. So uh, yeah, it'd be almost like a double XP weekend for call of duty or something like that. It's just an incentive to jump into this mode and play it. Um, when you would normally not have that incentive to, to jump in and play it. Um, no, I mean, yeah, I, I think we have hit most of everything that is included in this Diamond Dynasty blog. I I, th- I am very, although um, I think I said this to you off, off podcast, I, I'm not, this is not the most hyped I've ever been going into an MLB The Show by any means. But I, this blog and the information we got this week definitely significantly increased my hype for the game. I feel like yeah. they listened to core concerns that the community had and they attempted to address those concerns. And um, I mean, frankly, we've talked about this for a while. It it was hard for me to think that they were going to drop a mode or dropped a content structure that they probably invested a lot of time and effort in creating after one year. There's no, you got to give it a second shot. Yeah. Without taking the opportunity to make changes and make it better. Um, If it doesn't work this year, Maybe it doesn't come back for 25, but like they were going to run it back to see if they could make this something that works because this is so unlike any other ultimate team mode. Mm -hmm. No one else does this. Like they, they are out on a limb here and um, they're trying to be different and they're trying to, honestly, I think they're trying to make ultimate team modes better. Um, And I think SDS of all of the major companies that make ultimate team style modes, I think they care about the community more than any of them yeah and the marketing for this game cycle has at times been suspect Mm -hmm. they've been pushing pre-orders a lot without really showing us much well prior to this past week or so without showing us much but truly whether you like the new content structure or not which i don't think you should have a hard and fast opinion on until you play it anyway we're just excited about the potential of it but whether you like what was in the blog post or not the Tuesday blog drop followed by Thursday's blog drop. Whoever wrote them, whoever edited them, whoever approved them, A plus, because that information was easy to digest. It hit all the pertinent points. I think we're left with very few questions. And I would say our questions are more speculative than they are not mm-hmm. knowing something. You know, I, I think they did a very good job in the past week or so easing us a little bit because it like we were talking about it was you could feel it man yeah and i man i am heated um and this is probably unfair of me i am heated that we spent two feature premieres on storylines like i uh, listen i i think both storylines are going to be super cool but we probably could have done a half an hour on one 20 minutes on another got now 
Storylines was my favorite addition to 23. I played it literally within the first 48 hours of launch, knocked out all 10 of the storylines, mm-hmm. and it was awesome. It was my favorite addition of the game. The legends we got were super, super cool, and I know it's going to be the exact same. And you can feel the love and attention to detail and time and effort and hard work that they put into these modes. Like, obviously, this company loves storylines and loves yeah. what they're building for storylines. With that being said, storylines isn't the only part of the game. And in in all reality, it's probably a very small part of the game, a valuable and educational one, but probably in percentage wise, pretty small. Yeah. And I I think someone told me, um, and I I might be just completely pulling this out, out of my ass, if I'm being honest, but I was having a conversation with another creator the other day, and they told me that they, they saw the statistics and only 5% of the people who played the game on Xbox finished storylines this year. Really? yeah that low so, yeah and that's specifically so, xbox xbox people yeah. not as smart as playstation people we you know all know I mean, that but... i played <laughs> primarily on xbox but you're not wrong um that's wild though really yeah so i i mean you know and like i said maybe that's untrue or maybe he got incorrect information but i can see because of how that that mode is marketed and how it's like an educational experience it's almost like going to a lecture on baseball right which i really really enjoy as as someone who has spent mm-hmm. a lot of time in school and has is is an academic right but for your average run-of-the-mill person or even like and not to generalize but even like a 13 14 15 year old like they don't want to go to a high school class so they want to jump on and play diamond dynasty with ronald acuna like i I just uh, even more than the learning and the education which i learned certainly from mm -hmm. the storylines the creativity man was that that drew me in more than anything it's how do you not love bob kendrick's voice agreed Agreed. Like, I, yeah. I, and so many elements just came together and drew me in, which is going back to the, the storylines feature premieres, two points I wanted to make. I could listen to Bob forever. I mm-hmm. was not necessarily upset that was an hour long. It felt like more of a podcast, but that's okay. Secondly, I almost think they hurt themselves by co- calling the Derek Jeter stuff storylines. It is a storyline, but like maybe we could have come up with a more creative name like Legend Career. Legend Career sucks, but like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, something a little bit different. So they at least could have hid the fact that it was a storyline under a different title. Yeah. No, I think that that would have made sense and probably would have made people um, slightly less upset about how it ended up going. Um, but if they would have just combined that into one, even if it would have been an hour and a half feature premiere and they just did like 45 minutes just on one, one and 45 night. minutes yeah, yeah, on yeah. the other, I think yeah. people would have been fine. I think that one thing that we are starting to run into and um, going back to Mills, we had a conversation about him earlier. Um, the fact that we only have one feature premiere left and not a single offline mode has been mentioned in the marketing up to this point scares the holy crap out of me because yeah. I want to make content around Road to the Show. God, I do. That's but another reason road- people get burnt out is because yeah. we don't have a f- truly immersive alternative to Diamond Dynasty. If you gave me a cool Road to the Show, I would make content on it 100 percent. i tried Correct. this year i gave it three weeks it was the least fun i've had playing a baseball mode ever so i stopped yeah um i, I will say that um i thought it was fairly interesting that ramon liked my tweet about changing how road to the show progresses uh, uh listen ramon's been out there in the streets on twitter he's been liking stuff left and right yeah it's leaving clues and leaving hints so we'll yeah, see so i mean if it if they changed how you progress your player and road to the show i think that that by itself would be enough for me to really like give it a try but yeah, i, saw I some... just need more narrative man. like I, I agree i can't take 50 straight at bats in a row over the course of 10 games and have nothing happen in terms of dialogue or confrontation or anything i think that um god who was it that i saw talking about this it might have been it might have been shelf or it might have been scuff um they, they were talking about how MLB The Show did a huge job between 18 and 20 overhauling Road to the Show. Like they completely mm-hmm. changed the mode. They can change all the progression. They changed what was in the mode. They took away the Bowman Scout day. Like yeah. they made so many changes to Road to the Show. And it ultimately feels like that overhaul fell flat and the community mm-hmm. didn't like it. And I think that they're still trying to pick up the pieces of that failed rebrand of Road to the Show. Um, and I think it's going to be a if if this is the year that they really start trying to go back at road to the show this is going to be a multi-year process to get that mode back to a place where it deserves to be i mean for a lot of people it's probably 
how they got into MLB the show. Like, oh, it I is mean, the most played mode. Even yeah. even if it's a shell of what it could be, it is de- even if you take away the relationship between Road to the Show and Diamond Dynasty, which I hope is severed forever. But e- even if you take away that relationship, it's the most played mode, hands down. Mm-hmm. No, no, it one hundred percent is, and um, I, I want to see it get to back to a place where it's it's really fun. I, from my experience with franchise, I think franchise is in a pretty good place. There's definitely some stuff that they could um, do to bring it into the modern era of gaming, as far as franchise modes go. Um, but my my big issues with offline gaming really are directed at Road to the Show. So I hope that they come out with some heat this week. Um, because right now I'm not feeling overly confident about what the offline modes are going to look like for this. Yeah. I'm, I know they have separate, separate, excuse me, development teams and separate like strategy teams and things like that. But the fact that they had to overhaul diamond dynasty pretty much again, it's not a full overhaul like last year, but it's, it's an overhaul of an overhaul. Mm -hmm. So the fact that they had to do that again, I, I wonder if that took away from their ability to do a ton in these other places. Yeah, I um if for me personally, if the if the main focuses for SDS this this year were adding animations and adding storylines, I will be a little bit disappointed with the game. Like I the animations are gonna be helpful and the storylines are gonna be cool, but yes, yeah. it, it leaves significant chunks of the game basically untouched. Yeah. And the big, like big core portions of the game yes. that should like be getting updated. Reasons annually. people, I have yes. friends who buy the game for Road to the Show, and I ask them, "Are you sure?" Because there are other things that get a lot more love that you could play if you mm-hmm. bought the game, but they just love Road to the Show. That's their thing. Yeah. And I mean, like we can get into it because honestly, I I love the gameplay changes that they're bringing. That I thought the gameplay, um, and I've seen I've seen some back and forth on my Twitter about this. I thought the gameplay of MOB The Show 23 was the best we've ever had in the series. I it thought was it was great. fantastic. The The only issue I had with gameplay this year was inconsistent seawall pitching. Um, and I wanted, I for a long time, it's felt like um, ch- curveballs specifically don't work. Oh, like they're useless. They, they I, don't, I, don't I hardly work. throw them. Correct. And this this year with them buffing pitching for breaking pitches, thank God. Like yeah. th- that is fantastic. I understand that they still need to make fastballs a little bit less accurate because like you don't want someone to be able to dot one Oh two every pitch for mm-hmm. a whole game. Like that, that's not fun for, for yeah. the, the person playing on the other side, but increase or buffing the, the breaking pitches is going to be huge and focusing on tuning fielder urgency. That was huge for me. Oh God, it could be so big. The, uh, the amount the, of times the, my the first fielders... baseman not throwing the ball after recording the put out. It's like, what are you processing? Yeah. Throw the fucking ball. Yeah. And, and uh, it may, hopefully you see some of that urgency changing with like outfielders too. Cause there's still far too many times that like my outfielder. Oh, they watch like, it bounce 12 times yeah, in front of them before they pick yeah. it up. And, or like, I, I have it like my player lined up in the little like arrow where they're going to run up on a, and a, then they a do a fly. pro hop to like the yeah. right or left. Instead <laughs> like, of like, straight line boys straight line what are we doing or they it takes a few seconds for them to throw the ball um one place that the I urgency hope of cutoff men was bad too yeah oh yeah Very it bad. was tough um one thing that i hope gets an urgency buff especially with the changes uh they made to stealing um if urgency on catchers yeah. better be a focus this year because there's times where that extra couple of milliseconds for the throw meter to pop up is the difference between throwing a dude especially out with and, bigger bases now yes yeah. And the so, disengagement rules, which yeah. I don't think disengagement is really going to come into a play in DD unless mm-hmm. you really take leads and go back. Take it like you can yeah. work your way into those. But uh, yeah, I, the only gameplay thing that they didn't address, which is everybody's probably big nitpick, is the foul ball epidemic. Mm-hmm. I think it depends on the mode you play on and which you get the most. Hall of Fame, I, there are more foul balls on Hall of Fame than I've ever seen in my entire life. And mm-hmm. it's got to be clearly one of the most difficult things to balance because you could do all you want in terms of attributes and check swings and umpires and this and that it becomes a semi skill thing i'm not saying the best players get more foul balls but it's an a plus b thing you swing and the timing's good i guess a plus b plus c and you're near the ball you're gonna foul it off mm-hmm. no matter what sorts of things they implement you're fouling the ball off so i don't know how to fix it and i'm not proposing a fix but it's gotten bad again. Yeah, I think that the foul ball 
epidemic, how they could fix it is, and I, I think they tried this by doing the dynamic PCI or the shrinking PCI when you take it out of the Which zone. Which I like, I'm a fan. You, you, you have to punish people for swinging at pitches out of the zone. Yeah. Like that's, that's just it. Like don't, if someone fouls off a pitch, that's a, a slider that catches the zone or a sinker that gets the zone because they have decent timing and their PCI is somewhat around it. Okay. I, I tried to throw a strike. They caught me. But the, the cutter if, yes. that's like a foot and a half outside where yes. they slick their wrists at it. I'm like, come on. They, no one does that. Yes. That's, a whiffle, that's a wiffle ball foul ball. Correct. Not a baseball foul ball. Punish them for making a bad decision. Like, okay, yeah. they swung at a strike. They tried to make contact with the strike. Fair enough. It either has to be a swing and a miss or it has to be in play. Mm-hmm. We got to start putting some balls in play here on the ground. We got we got to get some action going. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, I think that punishing punishing people for swinging at pitches outside the zone um, would fix a lot of the foul ball issues. Um, I also like that they're making some of the pitches to throw more difficult. I'm here uh, for it. As, I'm not yeah. excited about it, but I'm here for oh, it. Yeah, but um, making it so lefties have the reverse of righties on the pinpoint animations is going to be really, really cool. Making sinkers more difficult to throw probably, hopefully, will have an impact on the meta. Um, because I, I mean, splitters are splitters are pretty hard for your vast majority of people to throw accurately consistently. Yeah. So I, I I guess by definition, this is a nerf. I don't see it as like a major nerf, but it's going to be a situational one where you need to throw the sinker in on somebody's hands, but your pinpoint's fucked up and you hang it down the middle. Mm-hmm. It's not going to impact every sinker you throw, but there will be moments where you're going to regret messing up your, your pinpoint. Yeah. Um, one thing that I was not talked about in the gameplay blog, but I hope we get some sort of information about it. I hate how elevation plays in MLB The Show. Mm-hmm. Um, I understand I, I, that. I want Shield Woods and Capital Lang to go away forever. Agreed. I'd like, and, and I've always heard people say like, oh, I play at this park because I want to get rewarded for my good swing. It's not getting rewarded. Bullshit. You want <laughs> fluke. Yeah. You want fluke. You want to get rewarded for the the borderline to to bad swings. Like, I, there's times it happens, right? Like perfect, perfect fly outs to center field do, do make you want to pull your hair out when they happen, but they don't happen that often. They really In don't. major league parks, they happen all the time, but don't mm-hmm. play there, which is another separate issue that should be fixed on its own, right? But that's yeah. neither here nor there. You have the choice. Yeah, and um, setting a, like a, especially for, for ranked and probably BR, setting a elevation like level, yeah. So all, all you're kind of on the same footing for all BR, especially stadiums, like no custom stadiums in BR, which would be great. Um, and it works both ways. Like I don't want to go play at shield woods or capital Lang, but I also don't want to play a Bayfront in the rain. Like I don't want zero elevation and the rain deadening the ball either. Like give me, give Just me, a cauldron. give me a situation where I know what I'm getting into when I get into the game, baseball is already weird enough that stadiums have different dimensions. I don't I need talk- elevation. I'm so happy you said that. I-, I feel validated. I have brought this up to like baseball loving friends. And I'm like, don't you guys think it's weird that every football field and NBA court are the same, but baseball teams can just do whatever the fuck they want. And they're like, no, it's cool. It's quirky. I'm like, it's weird. Yeah, it it's is super strange. weird. Fenway literally has a 40 foot monstrosity. That looks like it's like I, I don't even. It's ridiculous. It, it, and thank Yankee you for Stadium has a Mickey Mouse short Stop porch. It. <laughs> it's, it's not. Um, we're not going to talk about that today. But yes, it, it, it's crazy that baseball fields can be whatever they want to be. But, uh, elevation, I don't think needs to be stripped. A lot of people have called for it being stripped. I don't even know what that means because like there has to be an elevation. Mm-hmm. But if, if you made like online elevation a baseline of like. 2000 1500 yeah. like yeah. that's probably fine agreed um i i think that that would would really really help i notice in a lot of your videos because i do actually watch a lot of your content just a outside fan. of the podcast a fan. um but i notice you play a lot of ship it i love and ship. i still think ship it's great too a lot My of people point. say like it's you know it's dead to center field but like even with the elevation nerve I still think the park plays great <laughs> i i like ship it because it's my favorite batter's eye and un- unless you choose a weird time and there's like a glare issue, which I don't, if I'm the away team at ship, it sometimes happens, mm-hmm. but it's got the best batters. I, and I just feel like less fluke happens there. Not even like, sometimes you'll get some wall scrapers to right field, whatever, mm-hmm. but like in the power alleys, you got to hit the ball. It's a center field. If you hit it good enough, it goes out. 
the gaps play pretty nice. Mm-hmm. It just feels like a solid field, even with the nerf that they gave it from a couple of years ago. So that yeah. that's my place. I don't know. No, I play it. Ship it as my primary stadium online too. So I I definitely I agree with that. I I like how ship it plays. Um, it does play a little bit little bit fluky down the lines if you get out in front of a ball. Um, but you're right. Like to get a ball out in center or to get a ball out on the alleys, you have to hit the shit out of the ball. It's not and then, leaving not to say the ball don't. dies there. It just means you got to piece it. You actually yeah. have to piece the ball. So it helps Agreed. you and hurts you at the same time. It's it's a level playing field. Agreed. And yeah, I like ship a lot, but elevation, I, I hate, I'm completely with you. I hate um, capital and shield woods. It's just, I don't even know what ship it's elevation is nowadays. What is I it? I think it's like 32. Is it? Last time I saw. Can I give it a quick look within the menus here? Or do I have to go into a game? I think you can see it in the menus. If uh, I remember right. My inventory, my stadiums. You might be onto something here. Just got to find it. There's so many effing. Oh no, you can only see the diamond ones. Well, we're just going to go with 3,200 for now. I'm not looking. Um, yeah, elevation would have been a nice thing to to talk about. I wonder if that means SDS doesn't consider it a problem, which is I don't think that's the case because I've had conversation with them that indicates that they know it's a problem. Um, so I, I think that they are looking to – I don't – I just think that they don't know – they don't know what it, the best way to handle fixing it is. Removing two stadiums doing, like we talked fair. about would be fantastic. And it's it's hilarious that it's two stadiums that were added last year yes. specifically. Like as and two years after they nerfed ship it because it played too yes. small. And now there's also, two smaller ones. Ship it's elevation is twelve hundred. There it's you go. Way lower than I thought it was. It's uh, great. It's for fucking future, perfect. For future reference, your friends over at Showzone, um, also my, my friends over friends at Showzone, Showzone. Has, yep. have a list of all the stadiums on their elevations. Oh, so shout out to Showzone. Yeah. It's, it's a great segue to how we could end this, actually. Um, shout out to Showzone, which is sponsoring Scuffy's all time team tournament. And by the time you're listening to this, how expert podcaster with the segue right there. Um, I am casting the all time tournament with our friend Scan. Super excited for it. Uh, I've never casted mlb the show i mean i have a literal degree in sports journalism and broadcasting so i've done it in real life but i'm curious to see how it goes in a video game sense so i hope you guys tune in on friday at eight o'clock i think it's all going to be on scuffy's channel but information to come uh you have lofty lofty heights to follow up because thuni does a fantastic oh, job the king i and- know um i i think that you are going to do a great job though i appreciate that, that. yeah i was i was humbled when scan asked me i was like wow i I mean i'm not gonna say no of course that's super cool but not even on my radar so super cool super excited super cool make sure you guys tune in uh if you're playing in the tournament good luck i've seen the names on the bracket and i just want to say holy shit uh the best players on earth are in this fucking tournament so it's gonna be crazy i'm not built like that Um, oh i don't even entertain the idea of entering tournaments not for me Mm -mm. yeah so any final words on the content and the, the updates and, and everything we talked about? I think that they listened to us. I think that they I really so. leaned in and made the changes that they thought would fix core community concerns with sets and seasons that did not equal getting rid of sets and seasons. They had to keep it intact. They made the changes that they thought made sense to keep people engaged and keep content good moving forward and i will always give them the benefit of the doubt and at least give it a try before i come back in august or september on your podcast again and say (laughs) that this is god awful um but i I really truthfully think that mlb the show 24 is shaping up to be a fantastic fantastic game i will say one thing that i'm slightly concerned about this year specifically and i don't think that there's anything that they can do about it It, it just it is what it is NCAA football is going to hurt the game yeah, this year. It's going to hurt, but that's it's that's just, out of their control entirely. That, yeah, sort of, but yeah, it's going to hurt. Yeah, I mean, it's like coming in, out one way or another. In normal years, Madden 2K hurts the player base, um, and I think in a normal year, NCAA football would would be the first kind of hit to the player base that maybe it starts mm-hmm. dropping off a little bit. The hype that that game has and the excitement that people have for that game coming this year. I'm curious to see how MLB the show survives. It's going to hurt all sports games. It's going Mm -hmm. to hurt Madden most, but at the same time, it's the same company, so they're still making money from it. Mm -hmm. I don't know how microtransactions are going to work in NCAA. That's a different thing, but it's going to hurt Madden a shit ton, but EA will be fine. It's Mm -hmm. going to hurt SDS in a way that they really haven't gotten hit with before. We've never had a sports game with this much anticipation. Mm -hmm. 
So and, I hope that means banging content comes out that same time that NCAA comes out. Yeah, no, I, I, but I, I'm obviously going to be playing NCAA when it comes out. Like I, that's a game I'm super, super hyped about. I've said for a long time, it's my favorite series ever. Um, MLB, the show is right there at a solid two, but NCAA football scratches an itch for me that I mm-hmm. no other sports video game has ever scratched. I've for never me played. Personally. I've, really? I've, I've played Madden before, but like, and it's not oh, that I'm yeah. not a football guy. I, I watch, I love football. Yeah. Um, I, I just never got into the games and I like, I didn't go to a football school. I went to Fordham in the Bronx, which is oh, fair enough. Uh, not a bowl series. Yeah. So it's I, I, not big for me. I, I might, if, if Fordham ever gets entered into the game, cause I know FCS is not in the game at launch. Maybe, maybe we'll take the Rams all the way, but I don't know. For what, it, for what it's worth. I'm a university of Montana grad. So I am also an FCS guy. Yeah. But that's a much bigger, you know, that's, that's much fair. bigger. Thing. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, to like kind of put a bow, I guess on all of this, like I, I really do trust SDS to make a good game. I trust them to do what's best for the player base. And I, I trust them to make the changes that are necessary to make, to make the game um, the best they can make it within the structure that they've created year to year. Um, so although maybe my hype is a little bit lower this year than it has been in prior years, um, I still think that the game is going to be great. And I am one of the people that said MLB The Show 23 was not a bad game. I thought it was a very, very average MLB The Show. I thought it was good at times. It was less good than times. I thought it was a significant step up from MLB The Show 22, which literally made me quit creating content. Like I so I, I do have trust that MLB The Show 24 is going to build on the pillars that MLB The Show 23 had, especially in the gameplay aspect. Um, and they're going to do content right, and we're going to get a very good, well-rounded game this year. Preach. I hope so, too. And that doesn't make us shills, all you people out there. It just means we enjoy video games. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, and I'm a baseball fan, so that's ultimately what it is. Uh, all right. If anybody's not following Nutsy, Idiots, where where can they follow you? Uh, at Nutsy Poo on Twitch, at Nutsy Poo on TikTok, which is my biggest platform, and at Nutsy Poo underscore TTV over on Twitter. The man X. of many minor awesome. league hats. But that's true. Yeah. Um, awesome. Thank you, man, for being here again. You will be on again at some point. Uh, everybody, we are so close to launch week. It's probably weird to ask for comments an hour and 10 minutes into a recording, but I'm going to ask for comments. Comment down below what you think of all the cool stuff coming out. Should have done that up front. Whatever. It's YouTube. Everyone knows what to do. And uh, that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Love you all so much. See you next time.